So after this debate with the religious leaders, it's recorded that Jesus left them and he departed. And his disciples, when they were coming to the other side, they had forgotten to take bread. And Jesus, still thinking of his debate with the Pharisees and the Sadducees, he said to his disciples, Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. And the disciples misunderstood Jesus' meaning, and they reasoned among themselves, saying that Jesus must have said that because we have forgotten to take bread. And when Jesus perceived their thoughts, he said unto his disciples, O ye of little faith, why reason ye among yourselves, because ye have brought no bread? What Jesus was expressing to them here, as always when it appears that faith is being measured, faith by its own definition, you've heard me say it enough, cannot be measured. What Jesus was saying here when he questioned the disciples' faith and expressed that their faith was little, he was saying essentially to them, don't you understand how faith works? It, under, it works in this way. Verse 9. Don't you yet understand, neither remember, when we took those five loaves and we fed 5,000 people with those five loaves, and when we were done feeding 5,000 people with five simple loaves, you took up many baskets of what was left over. Don't you understand, Jesus was essentially saying to them when he questioned their small faith, don't you understand how our faith in God operates? There was no way for us to compute in our human minds, Jesus was saying to them, that you could take these five small loaves and you could divide them among 5,000 people and all of those people could be filled. And after they were filled, after that multitude of people were filled with five measly loaves, there would be baskets for you to take up of what was left over. This is how. Our faith in God works. We cannot analyze it with our human minds. It does not make sense. It does not add up. It is not necessarily absolute. Like my friend referred to math as being absolute, where two and two always equals four. Jesus was trying to express to his disciples here that our faith in God works different than anything that we can analyze and compute and reason out with our human minds. And then he went on to remember, to remind his disciples also, do you not also remember the seven loaves? That we took those seven measly loaves of bread and we fed 4,000 people. And when we were done feeding them 4,000 people with that seven loaves of bread, there was baskets of extra to take up. Don't you understand that's how our faith in God works? It cannot be computed like a math problem. It cannot be understood or perceived through human thinking and reasoning, just like those seven loaves could not any way that anybody through human thinking and reasoning could understand that you could take seven loaves and feed 4,000 people and then take up baskets of what remained. Christ was saying to his disciples, this is how faith in God works. How is it, he said to his disciples, that you do not understand that I did not speak to you concerning the bread that you forgot to bring. I was speaking of you, I was warning you to beware of the leaven and of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. And then his disciples understood how that Jesus was warning them to beware of the doctrine of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. In other words, beware of their thinking that we can understand and analyze God's realness and the deep things of God through human thinking and reasoning and computation. 
And when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, still thinking about his confrontation with the religious leaders and the things that he had just shared with his disciples concerning our faith in God, Jesus said to them, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that you're John the Baptist, and some say you're Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And Jesus said to them, But whom do you say that I am? And the disciples were either slow to speak, or reluctant to speak, either one, it doesn't matter. But Simon Peter, in his boldness, he answered quickly, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. You see, there is only one way for us to believe and know and feel and understand and comprehend God's realness. And that is for Him to reveal Himself to us. We cannot do it through our human thinking and reasoning. I have a dear friend who I became very close to. I'll tell you this story to make strong my point. I have a friend who I became extremely close to after my dad passed away. I have been blessed in life with the years that I had my wonderful father. And I have been blessed immensely in his passing by various dear and precious individuals who have helped to fill that large void. in my life that was left when my dad passed away. And one of those individuals who was more so my dad's friend than my own, they had been in the Navy together, and they only got reacquainted when my dad was diagnosed with cancer. But they quickly became very close. And when dad passed away, this man, my friend, became very dear to me, very close to me. And he played a, a good and very real part in filling up a large part of that void that was left in my dad's passing. <clears throat> and my friend was not a godly man. And because of my love and care for him and for his wife, I had a great desire to lead him to the Lord. I needed him to know my God. And through the many, many, many years since 1993 of my acquaintance with him, I spent extreme amounts of time using the best chosen words I could come up with to try to lead him to the Lord and try to make my God real to him. And I was always met with the exact same roadblock. He would always say to me at the end of our conversations, he was very open 
to discussing the things of the Lord. And he always thanked me and respected me for it. But I could never, I was never able to reveal God to him, no matter how hard I tried. Our conversation would always end at the same roadblock. He would always say to me, I just can't believe that God is real. And he allows all of these bad things to happen in the world. And I would even analyze that for him and express it and explain it as God's word dictates for us. But he just couldn't get over that or past that roadblock. He, like so many others, if somebody could just show him a sign like a math problem that can be computed if somebody could just show him something that he could see or he could touch or he could feel or he could analyze with his mind that God was real, then he would believe on him. But unless that happened, he wasn't able, no matter how much I was able to express to him. And I think of this situation as well with our children. We, we take them to church hopefully all of their lives. And rightly so, we should. This is God's house, but he doesn't live here. He's not contained in a building. He's everywhere. But although he doesn't actually live here, this is a great place to meet. So we do well if we take our children to church. I am so thankful that mom and dad took us to church. I'm so thankful. However, you can take your children to church. They can be in the best Sunday school classes with the best teachers all of their childhood. And they can sit in front of the best minister of the gospel and hear the best messages that he can bring forth directly from the Lord above. And none of those things can make God real to our children. However, he can reveal himself to them to where he is more real to them than anything in this world. I would always tell my friend when we would come to that roadblock that he couldn't believe in God's realness because of all the bad things that happened in the world around us. It was a roadblock that I couldn't get past for him. I couldn't help him pass that. And at that point, I would always say to my friend, there is nothing I can say. There is nothing that I can do. There is nothing that I can give you so that you can compute through your human thinking and reasoning that God's real. 